You may not have noticed, but there's a huge ball floating in the sky that created daytime and is so powerful you can't look at it for more than a few seconds. Nowadays, we call it the sun, and us humans owe everything to it. But what will happen to humanity, our Earth, or even our solar system when the sun inevitably perishes? If you were to call the sun middle-aged, you really wouldn't be wrong. Scientists have several paths to determine the age of the sun, like by studying the elements and meteorites through a technique called nucleocosmochronology, or by studying other like stars in different stages of their existence called stellar evolution. With all this info, they've concluded that the sun is about 4.6 billion years old, and in about 5 billion more, it will deplete its hydrogen fuel and start to die. It will exist in some form for several trillion more years, which we'll cover at the end of the video. But for now, the sun is very much alive and in its main sequence, meaning it's nice and stable. Stable despite the fact that through nuclear fusion, it's producing as much energy as 100 billion nuclear bombs every single second. If sound could travel through space, even millions of miles away, the energy from the sun would still be as loud as a chainsaw, constantly, all day long. If we could somehow capture all of the sun's energy for just one second and distribute it on our own time, we could theoretically power modern human civilization for 500,000 years. That's a lot of power, and the only reason the sun isn't blasting itself off into space is because the explosive energy is being pushed back by a fundamental force, gravity. This fighting of the giants has been going on for billions of years, and while gravity may be cool under the pressure, the sun certainly isn't keeping its cool. It's getting hotter and hotter by the second and not slowing down. At this moment, the sun has an average surface temperature of 5,505 degrees Celsius, which seems insanely hot until you realize that the sun's core reaches temperatures of 15 million degrees Celsius. This immense heat is a byproduct of the immense density of the core. The core is so dense, in fact, that when it creates light particles, aka photons, they can bounce around the interior, back and forth, this way and that way, for more than 100,000 years before they eventually make their way to the surface and break out, zooming away at the speed of light. And once they zoom, it only takes eight minutes for them to reach Earth. Poor little photons born 20 times earlier than the start of the ancient Egyptian civilization, before modern humans even existed, just to finally get free and be stopped eight minutes later by some guy sunbathing. And yes, as the sun is eight light minutes away, if it were to suddenly disappear, someone standing outside wouldn't even know visually for eight minutes. And what's even more is that it wouldn't just be the light catching up to us, the gravity would also take eight minutes to reach Earth, as gravity also travels at the speed of light. This means for eight minutes, we would basically be orbiting around an empty spot where the sun used to be. Whew. That's a lot to take in. So really, there's no denying the sun is a pretty exceptional celestial object. But it's all about perspective, isn't it? Consider this. In the night sky, when the sun is hiding, Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. If they were next to each other, you would notice that Sirius is twice as big as the sun, and 25 times brighter. But Sirius is just a little dot in the sky. Not only are they not next to each other, they're actually more than 8 light years away. Imagine looking at Sirius as an 18 year old, knowing that light has been traveling to you since you were only 10 years old. If our sun was that far away, and you dragged it towards Earth until it was eight light minutes away, like it is now, you could make daytime right before our eyes. This is a great way to grasp that the sun is, in many ways, the same as all other stars in the night sky. Actually, it's one out of 100 billion stars just in our galaxy alone. And let's not even get started on all the galaxies out there. But before you go thinking the sun isn't anything special, 
There's something unique to the sun's life that most other stars can't claim. It's rich history with us Earthlings and the complex relationships we've formed. Indeed, if we were holding a funeral for the sun, we would be remiss not to mention how it was worshipped or all of the solar deities that have arisen over human history. Ra from ancient Egypt, Amaterasu from Japan, Helios from Greece, Inti of the Incan Empire, and quite a few more. Some of these solar deities have a solid influence on you today, even without you realizing. For example, there is evidence that indicates the celebration of Sol Invictus, the Roman sun god, fell on December 25th and is a driving force behind this date being used for modern Christmas celebrations. Or, if you've ever casually tried yoga, you may be interested to know that some of the most common sequences are called sun salutations, which were traditionally practiced to worship the Hindu god of the sun, Surya. So, we've definitely given some personality to the sun, but it doesn't always need our help to be unique. One little feature that even some nice aliens may appreciate, and something we take for granted, is that here on Earth, we have near-perfect conditions for full solar eclipses. Unlike most other planets and the stars they orbit, ours line up like a finely crafted wristwatch. The sun's diameter is 400 times bigger than the moon, and it's also 400 times further away, so from our perspective, they look exactly the same in size. Because of this, it's not hard to understand how they well represent opposing, yet complementary forces. We love this comparison so much, we even used it to represent the two sides of our channel, light and dark, sun and moon, day and dusk. We'll provide the light content for now, but for every yang, there is a yin. So tune in for our next episode as we dive into the mysteries of the moon. But as fun as that analogy is, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that it won't last forever. As we mentioned earlier, the sun will start to die in about 5 billion years. But what will the full death of the sun actually look like? Well, once the hydrogen fuel starts to run out, gravity will start winning the fight and compressing the core, resulting in the sun growing to massive proportions and becoming a red giant. By this point, humanity would be long gone, either extinct or traveling the universe. And if we hadn't found a way to save the Earth in 5 billion years, the sun would envelop it completely and leave our solar system in shambles along the way. Then, once more elements are depleted in its instability, the sun will eventually shrink into a white dwarf star. If it were exceptionally large, it would end up as a neutron star or a black hole. But as it's average sized, the white dwarf is considered the final stage of its life. In this stage, the sun will be about as big as the Earth, but would still be 100,000 times heavier than the Earth. This means if you found a single teaspoon of white dwarf in your pantry, it would weigh literal tons, and you would need 100 people just to lift it. Whoa, that's heavy. But the thing is, even this isn't truly its ultimate form, because as you noticed, it's still glowing. This means that, although a white dwarf can no longer generate energy, the energy in it is still being released. So what happens when all the energy is released? The answer is, we don't really know. The time it would take for this to occur is estimated to be about one quadrillion years, which is magnitudes older than the age of the universe itself and everything in it. But in theory, a white dwarf would then become a black dwarf Having used up all of its heat and light, the Earth-sized remnant of the sun would be entirely and utterly deceased and would float around in the dark, cold, empty vacuum of space forever. So, let's be thankful we don't live one quadrillion years in the future. We live in the present, where we can spend every day greeting the sun in its warm embrace and every dusk, not saying bye, but by telling the sun. See you next time.